Hello? Hey. Hey, how's it going? Pretty good. How about you? Doing good. Doing good. Um, all right. I think I'm just going to uh, jump right into it. If, sure. Um, it's all right. So this is going to be a um, kind of a data structures question. There'll be a little bit of um, sort of talking about uh, like asymptotic uh, performance and then, then a little bit of coding at the end just to give you a little bit of a uh, uh, overview. So um, basic idea here is that um, we're trying to implement a, uh, a list. And we're going to try to see what the the trade-offs are for the different data structures that we can use for that list. Does that make sense? So um, uh, let's see. Can you see me uh, typing on uh, the? Yeah. Yeah. So basically, um, I guess I can just get rid of this. So uh, we're trying to implement a list that's going to. Right now, we're just going to have. Um, uh, two different operations we're going to have on it. Uh, we're going to have an insert um, and a delete. So there'll be like an index and a value. And then let's just say it's a, it's a list of uh, integers. Um, uh, so we'll have two, two operations, an insert um, get at an index and a delete at an index. Okay. So, and the two possible data structures are um, a uh, an array, right, and a linked list, right. So, um, can you describe for me what those um, uh, operations are going to look like for those two data structures? Sure. Um... So insert for an array um, and a li list that's backed by an array um, could be an expensive operation. Um, for example, um, uh, usually when a list is backed by an array, um, when you hit the end of an array, you, you don't have any more space. Um, you need to reallocate the array from somewhere. Um, typically, that boils down to a malloc or a realloc or something, uh, which could be potentially expensive. Okay. Uh, on top of, uh, I mean, even if it's um, on top of it, once you have a new memory segment, you had to copy the old list back into the, uh, sorry, the old contents back into the new block of memory that you allocated. Um, so basically uh, you, you're looking at a, I guess, asymptotic big go of um, either the max of O of N at a minimum or uh, max of that or however long it takes to allocate a new block of memory. Um, assuming allocating a new block of memory is almost nothing, let's assume it's log N or something like that. Uh, basically, at the very best, um, your insert will be O of N, uh, just because you need to mem copy the whole thing back into the new thing, new um, new array, mm -hmm. and uh, inserting it wherever it needs to be inserted. Okay. Um, so what about um, what about what you, what you do with all of the elements in this array? So <clears> let's <throat> say I have an array of of integers uh, like one, five, seven, nine. Right. Right. Uh, and then I say insert um, at index two the number ten, number uh, eight. So the resulting array is going to be one, five, eight, seven, nine. Right, yeah. So uh, this is basically a sec. Uh, mem uh, you need to move everything down. So uh, you could probably optimize the mem copy to uh, uh, to uh, essentially do a single pass mem copy instead of a double pass mem copy. Um, instead of let's say um, let's say your memory segment. Oh crap, where am I typing? Um, let's say you have an initial memory segment of exactly one five seven nine two five. Mm -hmm. uh, and you need to insert something, um, you would, uh, I mean, the first, then you would allocate a bigger chunk of memory, let's say that's this bigger. Mm -hmm. uh, this uh, this would be your first pass of mem copy. Um, then your second pass of mem copy would be to move, shift everything down by one, uh, which is again, sort of annoying. Um, mm -hmm. So you could possibly optimize, um, so the naive way would be something like this, which would be two mem copies. Um, you could probably optimize this thing so that you only do one mem copy and uh, try to just avoid the second one. 
uh, which should be fairly straightforward, I think. Um, you would just mem copy everything until index minus one, uh, then insert your thing, then just mem copy everything index plus one to end up the pre old list. Okay. Uh, All right. By the way, um, things like this, this is, I'm sort of assuming a really dumb uh, method of uh, allocating memory, uh, memory or sorry, uh, pre-allocating a memory. Um, usually what you can do is that um, if you anticipate that um, you are going to be inserting a lot of elements or you have a rough idea of how big your array is going to be, um, you could pre-allocate your array to be as big as you want. Um, so essentially, you're, whenever you have to insert another thing, you already have the pre-allocated memory. So you can just shift everything down and just put in whatever you want back here. So okay. you would reduce the cost of allocating a new block of memory. Um, so, yeah. Okay, makes sense. And um, uh, what was the, the runtime of that again? Um, the, uh, on average case, I mean, you could say O of n divided by two, but um, just because you could, uh, if you're looking at some sort of random access inserts, um, but realistically it's gonna be a worst case, which is what O of n is really. Um, so that would be um, O of n, yeah. Okay, sounds good. Okay, so deleting stuff, uh, more or less the same idea. Um, deleting is fairly straightforward. You just had to move everything. Uh, let's say you want to delete eight. Um, really what you're doing is just just moving everything down here. That's about it. Um, so it's shifting up by one, um, again, which is another mem copy, uh, mm -hmm. nothing more than a mem copy. Um, uh, nice, nice part is that you don't need to really reallocate your array or anything weird like that. Um, mm -hmm. You pretty much, I mean, you, uh, you, you can just leave uh, unused memory. Um, of course, you get you take a memory hit, but um, depending on heuristics, uh, if you're going to be really dumb about it, you can reallocate to a smaller chunk, uh, which, I mean, based on use case, uh, that may be okay to do. But uh, for the most part, nobody would do that. You just leave it as unallocated and just move on with life. Okay. So, um, linked lists. Um, inserting... Uh, it's not as bad, I would say. Um, <laughs> the difference is that uh, in a linked list, um, you had a uh, looking up an index in a linked list is not very easy. Um, so you'd had to traverse the linked list to actually jump to the point that where you want to insert it. But inserting itself is quite easy. Um, you can just uh, just take the previous pointer, uh, assign it to the new uh, the new element, and take the new element's next pointer and just assign it to the one that was there before. Um, so in that sense, it's fairly straightforward. Uh, but again, uh, traversing through a, a, a linked list is not, uh, it's terrible in a lot of sense that um, it's gonna wreck your cache just because um, if you're, each of the nodes, God knows where they're in memory, um, each time you jump around uh, the nodes, uh, you might be evicting pages out of the cache and you may be just cr destroying performance. Um, but if you have a rough idea of what the index is going to be, for example, if you say the index is always going to be zero or index is always going to be the last, uh, basically what you're looking at is there is a queues, a, a queues or stacks, um, which is basically, it's not really a random access, it's a fixed access. Mm -hmm. um, in those cases, you take away the traversal. So inserting is almost zero cost. It's all one basically. Mm -hmm. um, and in that case, even deletion would be all one because the, the cost and Managing linked list is traversing through the linked list, so uh, that would be that, yeah. Okay, so, um, but if we focus back on the case of the random um, inserts and deletes, where, uh, what, what are the the asymptotic uh, runtimes of those? Um, for the most part, uh, worst case scenario, if you want to add to the end of the list, it's going to be O of n. Um, Ditto with deleting, uh, but. Deleting, yeah, uh, if you want to delete the end of the list and you only have a point to the top of the list, mm -hmm. um, that would again be over and you had to jump all the way to the end of the list, delete it. Uh, so traversing is always going to be open. Okay. All right. Excellent. Um, okay. So if you can switch over to the whiteboard, um, I'm going to draw the graphs of those two um, as you had described them. So uh, can you see the, um, the axis oh, yeah. that I'm drawing here? Yes. All right. So um, as you mentioned, uh, so let's just start with um, uh, random inserts. And what I'm going to put here, whoop, whoa, did that. Uh, so on, the vertical axis, I'll put time, 
And on the horizontal axis, I'll put uh, length of the list. And uh, as you mentioned, they are, uh, well, actually, let's just say, can you draw for me what the um, what the curve is going to look like for random inserts of, um, say, the linked list um, or the the array the array backed version of the um, sure sure um, random inserts uh, I guess random inserts is n of two um, so well so yeah I, I don't even have any like uh, so just just the basic shape of the curve will be yeah it's going to be a line so it's sort of a very uh, that's supposed to be a line, by the way. <laughs> How to draw a line on a trackpad. So. Right, yeah, exactly. So um, just to make sure, it looks like it flattens out here. No, no, I didn't mean that. Okay. Flatten, no. <laughs> okay. uh, that's the okay. part I meant to. How do I erase this thing? Okay, I got you. I got you. Okay, so um, good enough. Okay, so that's the line for um, the array backed ones. Now, yeah. can you guess if you were to do a general, just um, regular, normal uh, uh, linked list, just like you described it, where you sure. allocate new nodes for each thing, blah, 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 what the line would look like for, a, uh, for the linked list? In comparison um, to this one, it would be exactly the same. Um, the only thing, I mean, like I said, right, um, for the uh, array back linked list, a lot of it depends on how quickly you can allocate a new uh, block of memory if you mm -hmm. need it. Um, so, I mean, maybe the line I drew there is wrong because I'm assuming that basically it takes no time to allocate a new chunk of memory for array back. Um, whereas for a, what, uh, for a node, or sorry, what is it, a linked list, yeah. Um, you don't really need to allocate a new chunk of memory every time. Um, yeah. So it would be more like, uh, it would it'd be more of a straight line just because you need to, uh, hey, that's a better straight line. Anyway, uh, uh, yeah. so it'd be more of a straighter line. Um, I would say that for an array backlink list, instead of being a straight line, you might see an occasional jump like this or something like that. Uh, I don't know how to describe it. Uh, <laughs> right now, yeah. yeah. Okay, but relative to that line, where would you put the um, where would you put the line for the array? Uh, for, sorry, for the linked list. So if the blue color is the, um, uh, it would be far straighter. Um, uh, sorry, uh, this is uh, yeah. Again, uh, the mem copy is gone. You're just traversing. So really, I mean, average case is just inserting in the middle of the list. I would say um, so. It should be the same. I'm not seeing the difference. So yeah, okay. I would. Say so what if I give you a hint sure. that it actually, and and you'd already mentioned this before, but if I give you a hint that it actually looks like this. Whoa, whoa, where, where's my? Oh, sorry, I'm trying to work this thing out. It actually will look like this. Um, so you've driven, you've drawn yours with like a certain slope. Yeah, yeah. And. Uh, Mine has a different slope. So can you think of why that might be? And and actually you've you've already alluded to it a little bit before. So I think you you do have the 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 idea. Uh so think about all the different operations and right, right, right. Uh, what, 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 what actually what actually takes up the time. So you're right that that it's uh, the allocation there. takes up the time. So basically, I mean, if you want to, uh, yeah. So basically, you would say that uh, uh, an array back list is, let's say, allocation takes uh, uh, O of n, um, and you have uh, this thing, the mem copy takes O of n. That's basically two n, whereas mm -hmm. in the node it's just traversal, um, yeah. which is n. So it's essentially comparing two n versus n. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, but wait, you said the 2n for the, wait, oh, the 2n was the array, uh, was the array. Yeah. and then the n was the linked list. Yes. But I've drawn it the opposite way. So really? the red, so the... the See, um, if it's actually the cache operations or things like that, um, I wouldn't... I don't know how to quantify that in terms of n, <laughs> just because. Yeah, yeah, no, no, and, and uh, no, um, no need to. I mean, uh, 
no need to quantify it, but just in general, just the ideas of uh, like what, uh, oh, wow, I don't have your color. Interesting. Um, right. Huh, funny, I don't have, I can't choose your color. But that's oh, fine. okay. That's really? fine. Anyway, yeah. so the bluer one is the, is the array. So um, just as a, uh, uh, so you actually, you had the answer right um, previously. It's, it's that um, when you traverse the list to go and find the specific element, you are going all over the cache and you, and every time you bust the cache, that means, you know, the whole thing gets reread, the, the current cache gets, gets completely thrown away inside the CPU and the new cache gets completely read from um, from regular RAM and then right. you find that one element out of it and then when you have to find the next element you have to throw all of that away read all the new uh, uh, data back in so actually it's it's quite expensive to do those uh, I yeah, that makes sense, but I mean, it's sort of hard to say whether a mem copy is worse or screen of your cache is worse. Uh, is your point? I don't know yeah. how to quantify that in terms of O of N because. Well, but if you think actually, about it, like if the if the mem copy is happening all within the cache, then it's going to be happening very quickly, and it's and if you think about you know you're going to have n operations that are inside your cache versus right. n operations outside your cache. So yeah. the the that outside makes, your cache ones are, are going to be significantly slower. That so, makes, so but the, at the same time I could counter saying that let's say all my nodes are well behaved and they're not sparse. Mm -hmm. um, let's say they're in similar memory regions. Mm -hmm. So in those cases, just because you're jumping across uh, nodes doesn't necessarily mean it's going to ruin your cache. Um, you, you may, it may be well the case that uh, whatever you're accessing happens to be within the cache. Uh, I don't think that's uh, Depends. I mean, a lot of things like th these sort of things depend on the data a lot more. Mm -hmm. So I would say. Yeah, no, that's that's certainly yeah. true. Yeah. But actually, I have uh, I have one one counter example. Um, so let's say that you have a, a relatively limited cache, and, and you're you're perfectly right that that a lot of this that depends on the data. You you know, there's a lot of things that are happening in here, and and uh, you know, these lines are rarely like exactly you know one n or two n. Oh yeah. But. Um, but I do have one one counterpoint to the question of, um, you know, let's say they're well behaved and they're all sort of tightly bound within one another. Can you think of a reason why even if they're tightly bound and they're they're all lined up next to each other, why the linked list is still going to be worse than the array in that case? Oh, if they're tightly bound together. So we're talking, you know, it's the, the effects show up when the lists start to get pretty large. So we can assume, for example, that the list is going to be bigger than one um, uh, unit of, of the cache. Right, so at right. some point, you're going to have to, no matter what you do, you're going to have to be swapping stuff in and out of the cache. But is, is, there, is there a reason that you can think of why the linked list is going to, even in that case, have worse cache behavior? than the array, even if they're all lined up next to each other? Um, I would say, only thing I can think of is how it's compiled in. Um, you may need to fetch a pointer. Uh, go, I mean, essentially these things are implemented as pointers. So mm -hmm. um, you would need to, load the point, uh, load, yeah, load the next pointer, then follow the pointer, maybe it takes three instructions per access. Whereas an array, uh, how is it implemented? Uh, well, arrays are just glorified pointers, so. So let's go back to the pointers. Where where are the pointers stored? Uh, well, the pointers are what are gonna be in the cache, but, uh, So in the so you're right. So the pointers are in the cache, as are the data for the linked list. But what's in what's in there for the array? Uh, well, I guess yeah. For the array, it's the raw data, whereas for the linked list, it's just pointers. Um, that's a huge distinction. 
Um, but moving pointers is as good as moving data itself uh, because we don't really care what it points to. All we're doing is just adjusting the next pointer. So. So, so let's make it a little bit more concrete. Let's say that you have a tiny cache yeah. and it has, uh, it has 12, um, let's see, let's say it has 12 bytes in your cache. Yeah. Um, and let's also say you're dealing with a 32-bit a machine. Sure. 32-bit pointers. How many elements of your array can you fit in there versus how many elements uh, of your linked list can you fit in there? Uh, how, long did, how big did you say the cache was? 12 bytes. The cache was 12 bytes, okay. Right. Uh, and you have... you have uh, The thing disconnected between. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm back. Okay. Okay. okay, so you have 12 bytes in your cache. Yeah. How many elements of your array can you fit in there versus how many elements of your linked list can you fit in there? Um, assuming each, uh, I guess you're talking about integers, so mm -hmm. you wouldn't be able to fit one integer within the cache, right? Because it's a 32-bit int. Oh, 32-bit. Oh, okay, sorry. Uh, I'm an idiot. Okay, yeah. Uh, so three elements. Okay, yeah. Uh, I should be able to fit in three integers, whereas because it's a 32 and it's a 12-byte uh, uh, cache uh, and it's a 32-bit machine. Mm -hmm. uh, Similarly, I would be able to fit in three pointers, uh, but I would that three pointers is as good as basically one and a half elements because I would have the previous as well as the next pointer. So in terms of elements, I guess I would have three elements for an array, but only one and a half elements, I guess, uh, depending on what's in the struct um, for linked lists. So I'll be more likely to keep missing the cache, I guess. Yeah, as you're as you're going through the array, right, right. Uh, the the space taken up uh, is less than than in the linguistic oh, yeah. case because you know, have all these it pointers. It takes memory to represent a yeah node than it takes to represent an int. Yeah. Right. Okay. Excellent. So what this all brings us to, and as you you pointed out uh, before, is that um, you know at the very beginning, if we go back to the the uh, the text. Um, pain. Right. Um, you show that you said that it was critical um, that you allocate the memory in the right way. That you said that there was a sort of naive way of allocating memory, where you said, for example, if you started out with the one five seven nine two five, and then to insert, you had to malloc a new uh, array that was one bigger, right? And then add in the uh, the the eight, and then shift everything over. Yeah. So that's sort of the most naive way of uh, of doing it. And so let's just explore this uh, and see if we can improve upon that a little bit. So um, as you described it, so in these three steps on lines eleven through thirteen. So this is sort of the simplest, most naive way of doing it. Um, how long is it going to take asymptotically to build up an array uh, of size n? And let's even make it a little bit easier and say we're always going to be inserting at the end. Um, I guess to fill up an array of size n, uh, and you're just filling up at the end, um, it is going to take. Um, you're assuming the memory is pre-allocated or no? Uh, no. So basically, we're going to use exactly the type of memory allocation oh. scheme that you described here. Okay. So, so um, if you're adding, so actually in the case here, it would be more like uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, like this. Um, and you need it to end up with that at the end. So um, you, it would start to look like this. So at the beginning of the step, you have a completely full array. Yeah. Um, you malloc a new one of size one greater. You copy yeah. everything over and then add the eight to the end. Yeah. Um, so if you're building up a in uh, your list, your array that way, how long is it going to take to uh, fill up an array of size n? 
uh, it is going to take basically the verse, the runtime of the malloc and multiplied by n, basically. Um, assuming the runtime of the malloc is one or some magical allocator. Um, yeah. let's, say that, let's say that it's constant. Let's say that... Uh, yeah, in that case, it's going to be n, yeah. Allocating is, is constant. Um, but to fill up in a, a whole array of size n by by saying, so for example, I'm uh, like, I mean, to make the thing we have there, it'd be insert zero one, uh, insert one five, insert two seven. So you see, so right. I'm basically just calling so, insert right. multiple so times. This is, this is I'm saying O of n. Um, o of n. Uh, how do you do O of n? Okay. O of n. Um, so if you want to just include all of these, I guess, uh, I don't know how many of these you want to, uh, if essentially. Uh, well, zero. so it's more like, oh, yeah, okay. Uh, so yeah, if you end up with m m elements, um, so it's going to be essentially m times n. Um, where m is the number of elements you want to add, and okay. n basically the uh, how long insert itself takes. Um, okay, but so, in, in, so in our case, where we've described the uh, we've described the process, what what is that going to so? So M, we, we have an idea of. So we're trying to build up a list of length M. And what is N going to be as far as this algorithm is concerned? Um, N is the mem copy that's required here. Um, so this is basically nothing. Um, to get this, um, the allocation is, of course, free for us. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. To get to this state, um, I guess, to do the mem copy into the new block, um, are we assuming that the allocator is able to just extend the block or no you can't extend the block. oh okay yeah uh yeah if it's not that magical um the mem copy up to here would be n basically okay um so um and the number of elements then adding here of course this is o one this step itself is o one uh yeah uh this step is o of n okay all right so then that sounds good. Now, uh, if I'm building up, so I'm just looking at this this line on on line twenty. Sure. Okay. Um, so n is actually fixed at any one of these steps, right? So this is O of one, and this is O of two, and this is O of three, etc. So then because we know how long the list is at that point. So what does this, uh, can you re rephrase line 20 in terms of just M? Yes, uh, in terms of just M. Uh, one. Because M and N are related. Yeah, M is N basically. I mean, right. <laughs> okay. uh, yeah, uh, M equals N in this case, I guess. Uh, or m squared. Uh, yes. Okay. Perfect. All right. So we have now an m squared algorithm uh, for doing all these inserts, which yeah. means it certainly doesn't look like what we drew on the um, on the whiteboard, which was a like a line. Right. So, can you think of any way to get this? timing down to turn that into a line as opposed to it being a uh, uh, a polynomial curve um, just reversing it um, so well so like I, I guess I guess I mean so we described a certain methodology for doing these inserts yes um, and it involved allocating something new that was one greater, uh, copying all the elements over, and then inserting oh, right, right, yeah, exactly, yeah. Right. 
So um, is there a different way? So that's a, that's a simple way and it will work, but it's, you know, it's, it's a bit slow. It's, it's M squared polynomial time. So can we think of a way to reduce that a bit so that we can guarantee that we're going to have a straight line curve as opposed to a, a polynomial curve when, when these things get large? Sure. Um, you mean optimize the insert, right? Right. Yeah, so just thinking about the insert case and, yeah. and just the insert at the end. So we don't have to worry about the other the other cases for now. Um, insert at the end. Uh, basically, what you're looking at is a stack of some sort or a queue of some sort. So how do you implement that as a buried back list? Um, um, sort of, I guess. Well, yeah. all I'm really thinking about is like, like steps 11 through 13 describe an algorithm for how to insert new elements yeah and as we've described it it has o of m squared runtime to build yeah. up a, a list of length m i'm just curious are you i mean limit i mean are you limiting yourself to an array backlist or i mean obviously yeah, I'm, just, I'm just thinking about arrays in this case okay um, we like it seems so like we, yeah. list. looking yeah. at the other um graphs we like we like the graph that the array has as opposed to the linked list. But the only trick is that we have to be careful with how we do the out the memory allocation, as as right. you as you pointed out. Yeah. So can we get can we go down to the specifics of what such a uh, a memory allocation scheme might look like yeah. to um, guarantee we, that we were doing a better job. Um so we can sort of look at uh, like some sort of exponential growth of the size of the memory that we allocate. Um, for example, right, um, let's pretend that we have an empty array um, whenever we start um, essentially, um, and essentially one is being inserted now, right? Mm -hmm. yep. um, so basically we have no spot for one. Um, let's assume the simple case, we just allocate one. Mm -hmm. And uh, again, you're uh, inserting uh, five now. Uh, let's just assume that's also a simple allocation. Mm -hmm. Now when we insert the seven, um, oh crap. Uh, so when we insert the seven, instead of just allocating, uh, so this is basically size zero. Mm -hmm. uh, zero, I guess this is size one, uh, size two. Mm -hmm. um, so when we have to insert a seven, instead of just allocating a size seven the naive way uh, and sticking as three, uh, we can. I mean, since we know that at some point in time, something new is going to be added on to, to the end, uh -huh. um, we could just say, uh, this is fine, but we're going to allocate size four instead. Mm -hmm. um, so when uh, so whenever you insert th uh, nine next, so you're going to have one, five, seven, uh, you already have space for the nine. So you can just insert it as this, and this is as good as O1, basically, since there's no allocation or mem copy that occurs. Yep. So okay. you can size four. So Excellent. eventually when you, let's say you insert whatever numbers next, um, let's say which is two or something like that, mm -hmm. um, you would do five, seven, nine, two, uh, but you would increase it to size eight. So how many do I have? One, two, three, something like that. Yeah. And these empty. Um, mm -hmm. So the next four allocations basically, or sorry, next three allocations um, are going to be of one. Okay. So, perfect. I like that very much. Now, can you tell me what the what the runtime is to fill up a uh like in in asymptotic notation? What is the runtime then to fill up a, an array of size m by doing successive inserts at the tail like this? Right. So, um the amount of times you'll be allocating and mem copying basically um, is every power of two. Mm -hmm. um, so basically, these points are effectively log n apart, I guess. Uh, I think the log n apart uh, every n times you hit the log n point. How do you describe that? Uh, 
Wonderful. Another another way to think about it is so uh, in getting up to um, size of eight. Yeah. You had to allocate how many different times? Uh, I would have had to allocate, uh, I guess one, two, three times. Uh, three times. Okay. Uh, so for size, oh yeah, that is a good way to think about it. Uh, so yeah, for size n, I would have had to allocate log two of n times. Okay. Uh, and. And each time you allocated, I would have a hit of n. So uh, I would have a penalty of n every log n times. Uh, how is that? What is that? I don't know how to think about that. It, uh, my mind is going to probability. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, so actually, sometimes it's, it's helpful with this to think of, um, to just sort of count it up. So like, um, if, you, if you're building up a, uh, a list of size eight, uh, how many op how many operations is that going to take? Uh, it is effective. And you can just you can just can count it up using these like these examples right here. Like right. Um. So for size eight, basically here I took uh, this is 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 is, is okay. So this took one operation basically, which is the allocation yeah. and copy. Mm -hmm. Um. This again took two operations. So in total we are at three right now. Mm -hmm. Uh, so this took uh, only what uh, three operations? Really, three operations? Yeah, three operations. But I had to take three more operations before uh, earlier on. So I guess this is six. Uh, this was zero uh, basically zero operations but uh, to come to, uh, to to this point i had had six um this one again i had to do what five operations oh, sorry four operations uh so four plus a previous number is 10. uh what's the pattern here uh <laughs> <laughs> yeah I'm, so uh, the, It is so if you think of I wonder one, if there's three, one, two, three, zero, four. This is this is a funny way of uh, funny way of thinking of it. Um, Perhaps the wrong way of thinking right. about it. I guess that's why I'm stuck. <laughs> right. So let's see. Um, if we think of it as the first one is the incremental steps and the total steps. Yeah. Um, so there is there is something that's a little bit confusing about this is that so you have the um, so the allocation here so so the first one is is fine it's one step yeah the second one the allocation is free right the, the copy is was one, one and oh, then you right. added one yeah okay. so this should be yeah so that uh, Allocation was free. Uh, the mem copy was one. Uh, so I guess. Right. So then, that that's fine. Um, so for the next one, the allocation was free. Right. The copy was two, and right. then you added one. Yeah. So, so it's still yeah. So we're we're doing okay here. And so then the total is six. Yeah. Then for this next step, there's actually only one, right? 
Uh, yeah. Because you've already pre-allocated the memory. Right, right, right. So that takes us to seven. It takes us to seven. So uh, at this stage, the, again, the allocation is three. The copy took four, and then you added the one. Because you're, you're copying the, the top four, and you add one. That takes us down to... So that's five, seven one. versus 12. Uh, and then one, five, seven, nine, two. That's going to be 13, basically. Five. The allocation is always uh, insertion. Okay. So then this is just one. And... It's going to be one for a while until we exhaust the allocation. Right, yeah. And then, right. Uh, let's see, are we up to eight yet? Excuse me, four. Uh, and then let's add the, another one. And again, so so now does the, does the pattern, and then the next one, blah, 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 is going to be eight plus one. So now maybe it's start. You you can start to see the right. pattern a little bit better. Right. Uh, yeah. So I guess the key is to focus on this. Uh, so actually, this was this was a little bit weird. Okay. That kind of starts to, yeah, I just changed line 22 to, to sort of show more our, the, the pattern. That right, right, right. Um, uh, so the basic formula this seems to follow is uh, something like the floor, uh, I mean, forget all, uh, oh, uh, just the pure mathematics would be floor log do size. I guess the other thing we could do here is we could look at the size of the array. Sometimes it can help to, because this is ultimately, this number here on the left is what we're trying to correlate against. And I guess I could be a little bit better about doing this. Um, and we could also line these up a little bit better. Um, all right. Uh, kind of thing. Something like that. Yeah. Plus N minus one. Or this is basically n minus one. It's also n minus one. I'm looking at n minus one here as well. Um, this is also eight. Uh, end of with eight. How, how is it a function of n? Um, Log of eight is basically what four? No, three. Three log of eight is three. Uh, that doesn't make sense. Uh, n minus one makes sense, but even to any when we're at a hundred, um, this is still gonna be. <clears throat> uh, let's see, when I hit n plus one, I am going to have uh, N elements here. So 
I will have n elements. Uh, would I have done n divided by two operations or not? That doesn't make sense. Uh, Uh, so one way to, to help sort of visualize this is that, you know, as we're, as we're enumerating everything, yeah. there's, there's, there's sort of two, you could almost imagine as two kind of columns um, that, that right. can be yeah. separated. So one is the allocation and the other is inserting the number. Right. The allocation itself seems to be, I mean, in 2D, it feels like it should be a log. Um, uh, it should be, uh, because end of the day, we only uh, end up allocating whenever we hit a power of two. Um, so that is distributed across N as log N, basically. Um, because it's or is it? Is it square root of N? I mean, you're right that it only happens log N number of times. Yeah. Um, but the question is, when you add them all up, um, does it equal n log n, or does it equal something else? It shouldn't be n log n. It looks like it should be log n plus, 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 uh, Log n plus it should be log n plus the distance between the previous point. Uh, so for example, so this is two. <laughs> I am totally blanking out here. <laughs> okay, let, let me let me just give you a little a little bit of a hint. So I I can see that you're on the right track. So and and you've got the the logs all in there. Yeah, so, the plus, the secondary part is what. Uh, right. I mean, so in terms, it feels as though in terms of the the time of allocation plus the time of insertion, it's sort of how I was kind of showing these, right, these yeah. numbers here. So the, the first time, number... Uh, definitely right. over n, uh, sorry, of log, uh, log n. Uh, that I feel comfortable with. Um, mm. The time well. of... <laughs> mm. <I'm> not... <laughs> Maybe, not. Maybe not. So so the time of insertion is just all of these ones because we're always just inserting at the very end. We've already done all the allocation and we're just inserting yeah. at the very end. So, so to do this, to, to get up to n times, uh we just have to go and right n, right so it's sort of mm -hmm. like to get up to this number eight here we had eight ones in that sort of time of insertion column yeah so the big question is like you know what is what is this thing so if you think about it if we were going to try to get up to n how many like what would we be what would we be allocating so first we allocate a one then we allocate a two, then we allocate a four, and then an eight, and then eventually you only have to allocate n. I, I guess this is more, not the allocation, I mean, this is the time of the, the copy, sorry. Uh, mem copy, right, yeah. Yeah, time of the copy. So at the first one, we're just copying one, then two, then four, then eight, and then at the very end, you're only, allocating or you're only copying at at most n or actually no, the copy is mean, more like n over two um because you never you never copy so like uh when you get so when to build up that size of eight uh, the last copy you did was four. Oh, okay yeah right? so when you look at this eight here to build up the to build up the uh, length of uh, the list of length eight, the last time you did a copy was for four. Yeah. So 
what is what is this whole thing? So that's the time of the copy. And then the time of insertion is just here to line everything up. Right, yeah. So. So what is the left part boils down to? So that's a question. Um, right. It looks quadratic-ish. Uh, well, I mean, pick. let's pick a number, right? Like, let's say we're going to try to um, go to uh, 10, uh, to 256 or something, right? Yeah. So 8, 16, 32, 64, 128. Yeah, so that is something like a bunch of, uh, those are powers of two basically, but you're adding up a bunch of powers of twos. Uh, what is that? What is that return? We get a bunch of, we add a bunch of powers of two. Well, what is one plus two in relation to the number four? Uh, it is essentially n minus, uh, or it's uh, one plus two is three, which is one less than four. Okay. Uh, so one plus three plus four, uh, sorry, uh, three plus four is seven, which is again, one less than eight. Uh -huh. um, so that pattern's gonna follow basically all the way to I guess n or 128. Uh, yep. So does that? So if we want to dot 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 this all the way to over n over two, what does that equal? Well, what did it equal in terms of 256? So when we when we were trying to build up a array oh, of like n times n minus one, um, it would be n times n minus one basically, uh, wouldn't it? Uh, so let's do that. Let me do. Hold on. Let me limit myself to eight so that I can deal with small numbers. Um, okay. <laughs> so uh, okay, it's n minus one plus n here, n minus one uh, plus n which is 2n minus 1 mm -hmm. uh, sorry which is 2n minus 1 uh, does this so that would entail the type of, but we are going up to blah, blah, blah to n divided by two. So n is really n divided by two, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, oh. n divided by two, uh, I guess the stuff cancels out. Yep. Uh, we get n minus one. Um, yeah. And I guess plus the time of the insertion that we still have floating around, uh, that boils down to basically 2n minus 1, I guess. Yeah, exactly. So, <laughs> so. <laughs> that is a very nice way of thinking about it, I guess. I don't know why it's not very intuitive. I need to, I guess. Yeah, no, it is. It's, it's funny, right? So, so just to tie all the pieces together, when we did yeah, it in yeah. way, it was, it was how much? Uh, sorry? When we did it, so just, just to tie all the pieces together. So you got all the pieces here. Yeah. Uh, when you tied all, when you did the naive way, right. how long did it take to insert everything? Um, the naive way was basically copied over and, um, and move everything, uh, sorry. Uh, yeah, I guess it was M squared then. Um, Whereas here it is, uh, are we including all of these inserts? We are, right? Yeah. Well, so so just, I mean, we, we'd already worked it out from before. So yeah, it was naive way. Or n squared m was n, so n squared. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And the new way, we have 2n minus 1. Just so, just so we're totally clear here, which one's better? <laughs> <laughs> uh n squared. Okay, so this is 
no longer. So this is going to be basically O of zero, I guess. I don't know what to call it. Uh, one O uh, of one. So this is constant. Again, this will be O of two, four. I, I I mean I mean we 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 already we already worked this out. This, we're just I'm just kind of just trying to tie everything together in your mind. Yeah yeah yeah. Sure, so right. so the the old way uh, I think we'd even written it. Uh, uh, yeah uh, M squared. Yeah. And then the new way, I guess we we could uh, we could just call these M's because that was the yeah, right. that was the two M initial minus yeah. right. Okay, so we've got the M's. And which one's better between these two? <laughs> uh, yeah, one is quadratic, the other is linear, I guess. So uh, the linear one, uh, two m minus one, would be considerably better. Okay, very good. And uh, and that's that's kind of just to bring it back, like what I was uh, implying with this thing on the uh, on the whiteboard, that it is in fact going to be a linear um, that you. You had even drawn this little um, uh, the spike, yeah. That little spike that yeah. actually you don't even need to worry about the spike. That if you are smart about how you do the uh, um, the allocations and the copies, then in right. fact um, you avoid the spikes altogether and you just get linear time, um, uh, no matter how you do it. Wow! Well, yeah, that. That's very revealing to me. <laughs> oh God, I need to focus on these algorithms. <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's funny. Like we, you know, you, you take for for granted. We all take for granted, like how how the inner workings of some of these very simple data structures work. But uh, yeah. yeah, sometimes the the math underneath it can be kind of. Can be kind yeah, of I mean, you just see a loop and you just say, "Hey, yeah, that's O of n called it here." <laughs> right. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> you see two loops. That's O of n squared. <laughs> right. But actually, so this is a this is a famous one in terms of um, uh, series. Like, I mean, it definitely sounds like you have uh, a, a good gut sense for um, for asymptotic notation and stuff, and and series and logs and all that kind of stuff. But sometimes it can help to memorize some of these formulas. Uh, yeah. And this is a this is a famous one that um, that when you are uh, counting up powers of two. So this is like two to the zeroth plus two to the first. Right, right, right. Two to the second, blah, blah, blah. Um, to two of the log n, just kind of a weird way of saying n. Yeah. <laughs> then that just equals n. Which uh, n, yeah. Yeah, so you had n minus n divided uh, by n. Two, two times n. Yeah. yeah. So um, that that's an that's an interesting one to keep in mind. That even though you're adding up powers and the powers are growing very quickly, uh, yeah. the everything to the left of the number is completely overshadowed by the last thing. Right. Yeah, that makes sense. Yes. So. That's, that's sort of an interesting property that, that comes out. And that's the reason why certain algorithms have very nice properties that they do. Because if, if you can structure an algorithm so that it has this kind of pattern, then you know that basically you, just, you can just focus on this last term and how much time it takes. And you can completely ignore everything that happened um, previously. Got it. So that, that's just sort of a little tip for, for this. And this is called um, a geometric series. That rings a bell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, the ones that I remember is basically stuff like uh, geometric series, something I forgot. I think the one that's Gauss's formula, basically when you add up one to n, mm -hmm. uh, that was a thing. Uh, that was a pattern I was trying to somehow reconcile with this. Right. Uh, basically, we just add up one all the way to n. Uh, mm -hmm. So that's the one I had memorized. So I was trying to reconsult that with this. Ah, right. So there is uh, there's another one. This is quite famous too. Um, so actually, you can rewrite this as just uh, as just n. 
uh, up to n is yeah. This is n times uh, n minus one divided by two or something. Yeah, n times n minus one over two, which is O of n squared, which right. is kind of in some ways seems almost counterintuitive that when you just add numbers um, in arithmetic series like this, it has a greater sum than the previous one that was increasing by powers of two. Yeah, exactly. And the, the whole, the whole, uh, the, the reasoning behind it is that if you look at the, the length of how, how, how many there are, you know, left to right. Yeah. There's um, there's only log of n on uh, on the top one, but on the bottom one. So it's like, how many terms are you actually adding up? Right, right. I get that. So essentially, yeah. n here becomes a log of n. So yeah. essentially, when you say o log n uh, or squared, a uh, squared essentially just boils down to an n. Uh, yeah. Exactly. So yeah, these are just a couple um, useful series to kind of just have in your mind when when you're going over over this stuff. But, cool. Brilliant. All right, excellent. Well, well done. Thanks for, uh, <laughs> for for sticking it out. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, thank you very much. Uh, actually, you exposed a lot of flaws that I need to focus on. <laughs> so this has been incredibly, I guess, uh, insightful. So oh, thanks. Uh, thanks for exposing right. flaws. Yeah, that's. <laughs> Uh, I, I tend to be an embedded programmer, so I don't care about anything sciencey, uh, computer ah, science. Yeah. Uh, these things, uh, yes, correct. Uh, most most of the stuff I deal with is of one, so I don't need to care about. Ah, right. Yeah, that makes yeah. sense. That makes so sense. Uh, mo yeah, I tend to like just forget computer science stuff and just focus on actual like uh, sort of <laughs> on real work. Yeah, I know. Yeah, it's tempting sometimes. See, it is kind of funny, right? That like even so sometimes. I mean, I I work in. Uh, I can search, so I, I definitely deal with stuff that works on a, like larger algorithmic uh, okay. sets and stuff. But still, like you know, uh, you deal with this stuff very seldomly, where you're actually going to implement a list. You know, that's not really right, what right, people right. do. But uh, for better or for worse, that's what a lot of um, interview questions are in in this world. So it's kind of like hearkening back to those like. CS 101 classes, how many right, right. It's kind of funny. Actually, which is why basically when we were talking about cash and stuff like that, I was able to reveal it off because that's the stuff I deal with. I don't right, care about yeah. the most part. I care about when I hit a cash miss or what takes up latencies and things like that. Yeah, exactly. No. Yeah. Cool. All right. Well, good luck with everything. Thank you. All right. Uh, thanks a lot. Yeah. Appreciate it. Yeah,